Hey, I'm Ryan McLean. I'm from publicspeakingpower.com and today I am here with one of my heroes, my hero, which is my dad, Stuart McLean, and we are talking about how to create a father of the bride speech. So for those of you who haven't watched the previous videos, I'm actually down in Sydney. We just had my sister's wedding not two days ago. So dad delivered a great speech, father of the bride speech, which was funny and brought some tears to some eyes as well. And so I wanted to talk to him about how he went about creating that speech and how you guys, if you need to create a father of the bride speech or I guess any wedding speech can go about addressing that. So thanks again, dad, for interview number four this one. Yeah, is. hi, happy to be here. <laughs> again <laughs> yeah. on dad's porch. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk first about when you're doing a father of the bride speech what are the formalities that you kind of need to address? Because I remember when I did my wedding speech, there were some things that you need to do as part of tradition. Like I needed to talk about how the bridesmaids were beautiful and to thank people who helped out. And so what formalities are there as the father of the bride that you need to address? Well, as the father of the bride, obviously you have to welcome on behalf of the families, uh, the, the husband, the, the groom and the, the bride, you got to welcome everybody there this evening. You have to make special mention of the people who have travelled from interstate, perhaps from overseas, to be there as well. And the way I was taught is that um, if there's any overseas guests or people who couldn't be there who have sent well wishes, you can also pass those on as well. Um, so traditionally, Dad was telling me that traditionally the father of the bride speech uh, was to read out telegrams from people who were overseas who could not attend the wedding. Yeah. But obviously, things don't have get changed. so many telegrams in case. <laughs> Haven't received a telegram <laughs> yeah, yeah. in a while. Although, Granddad might get one from the Queen soon. Because he's about to turn 100 in a while. Well, a few, well, a few years. years. Yeah. So, we just cut out. We ran out of storage space on the phone there. So, we were discussing the structures, oh no, the formalities that you need to cover. So, we talked about addressing people who came from interstate or overseas. We talked about the well wishes of people who couldn't make it and what else is there? Checking with the bride, what she wants or doesn't want doesn't want yeah. in the speech as well. Yeah, and then of course you have to welcome the groom into the family, yeah. uh, speak about the groom, your feelings um, about him as a, the, the man in your daughter's life, uh, then progress from there into you know, talking about your daughter herself uh, okay so let's talk about um, first let's talk about how you went about preparing your speech and structuring your speech and then let's talk about some of the things that we believe should be involved in the father of the bride speech like when we went over your speech and we talked about um, the stories and talking about the compliments and things like that so when you obviously knew your daughter was getting married how do you go about starting to prepare your speech the first thing I recommend to anybody is give yourself plenty of time. Don't leave it to the last minute. Don't have it scribbled on a little bit of paper. I did that for my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I mean, it could work Mine was an people. impromptu speech, and I was very fortunate that it went well. But yeah, yeah. for most yeah. people, give it I a good I think as a father of the bride, do yourself a favor. Give yourself a bit of time. And the way I did it was I actually structured the speech in my, in my head. I had a particular theme which I wanted to carry through which was that um, for years, scholars and scientists had been searching for the meaning of life. And to me, the meaning of life was right there in that room with people coming together to celebrate Sarah and Mark's wedding. Yeah. So that was so a you central, had this main central, central theme. Central yeah. concept that mm. you wanted to get across and then you went about structuring your speech around that concept. I guess it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. You have the concept, you have the picture of what you want to present and then the different elements come in you have to so obviously putting the pieces together. Putting the pieces together, you have the formalities of welcoming people, welcoming guests from overseas, any overseas or in, you know, messages that have been sent. Speaking about welcoming the the groom into the family, a little bit about him, and a little bit of humour in that as well. Yeah, you've got to add something humorous, I think. You've got to have a couple of humorous aspects, and I think if you can end on a fairly poignant note rather than just sort of drifting off is, is another good way to go about it too. yeah 
So you want to kind of you want to keep it pretty short and pretty sharp because you know that there's going to be quite a few speeches at a wedding. So you're given a time. Limit yeah, the time limit. limit between three and five minutes. And mine came in at uh, I think just four minute, four and a half minutes. Four and a half. So right near the deadline. Near the and deadline. so uh, Dad's speech progressed. He talked about um, the central concepts that he wanted to talk about. Then he went in to discuss. Uh, an experience that you had with Mark, who was the groom. That's correct. Um, and he added some humour in there, talking about when Mark came and uh, asked for... Uh, he asked for... I, I said that the, I first got the true measure of Mark as a man when he came around unannounced to ask for Sarah's hand in marriage. And after we, I gave him an enthusiastic guess, we hugged it out. And I said, and as he held me, and it was during that somewhat awkward moment, as he held me in his big, strong arms, that I realised what my daughter Sarah had been looking for all those years. Yeah, yeah. so that got, got the laugh. Got, got a good, that was got the good laugh, laugh that you were after. Yeah. And so had, once you had decided on the structure of your speech, how did you go about memorising it? Did you do it word for word? I ended up using my notes towards the end because I, I, I was getting myself into a pickle by trying to memorise the whole thing. And so I, I had the... The first sort of two thirds of it down pat, but the last part, uh, which was the emotional part, I, I kind of had my eye on my notes because that was the, you know, the punchline. I didn't want to, like, I'm telling a bad joke and forgetting the punchline. You know, nothing worse. <laughs> forgetting the, what was that punchline again? Yeah. You don't want to just fade away. So, so give yourself a lot of time. Uh, Put it together like a jigsaw puzzle, focus on a central concept that you want to get across. Yeah. And um, what about choosing the stories that you involved in the speech? How did you go about choosing which stories you wanted to use? They will just not naturally come to the surface. I, it, we discussed it earlier on in some of the Toastmasters um, videos that we did. Speak about things that come from the heart, things that you know. So when I sat down, um, it just, there was... I spoke about certain memories I had of Sarah, you know, the first day of school. First baby steps, first day at school, um, first ballet concert, performing at the Opera House, a progressive thing, you know, to yeah. her being there that day and also complimenting her on her beauty. And, and then there was one particular memory which surfaced when Sarah was very young, which to me, indicated her strength of character and actually Ryan gave me some help on that. I, I hadn't quite explained it properly and when I ran it past Ryan he said you need to expand on that point and actually expanding on that point was the was almost like the keystone of the speech and brought it in together so thanks very much. No Ryan. worries. Yeah I think that the whole idea of the stories is you want to compliment the bride and the groom at during your speech so stories are a great way to do that and to explain why you're giving that compliment to the groom or why you're giving that compliment to the bride. And Dad had done it very well in his speech and talked about Mark and then gave him a compliment, a great compliment as a man and compliment to his friends. Then he had these stories about Sarah, but he had um, kind of just this missed line, one line at the end just to talk about her strength of character. And by using that story, it's like, usually, it's just like any story. You have the moral of the story that you want to get across. And so get the stories that come to your mind and then see what moral or what compliment you can tie into that story in yeah. your speech. There's another good trick is obviously use your iPhone. There's a um, thing in there where you can record your speech. Record your speech and then just play it back to yourself. You'd be in your car driving around, you read it off your notes, you record it and as you're sort of going, if you're driving somewhere, put your headphones in or put it through your sound system and just play it back to yourself. And that way you'll, you'll get an idea of whether you're too fast or too slow. And the other important thing in, in a, a speech of that nature is pausing. You need to have pause, you need for pause for reaction. You need to get the laugh. Don't push through the laugh because you've wasted the whole thing. And yeah. Obviously, and, and, and build the emotion as you go. Uh, and a good way to do that is by pausing. And also eye contact. If you can move your eye around the room, you've got to look at the bride. If you're speaking about the groom, look at the groom speaking about the bride and if you're speaking about the friends you can recognize the whole room and and keep it clean there's no space in the father of the bride speech for libel that's the best man's job 
Yeah. 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 Respect. Respect at all times. In the Father of the Bride speech, you don't want to be talking down about the groom or talking down about the bride or talking about any awkward situations that may have been in. That is really the place for the best man speech is to talk about those funny moments where people can laugh at. your job. cringe. Yeah, and the, crin- the cringing <laughs> moments. Cringe factor is not for the dad. It's not for the dad because that's that's awkward. The father of the bride's usually one of the earliest speeches, usually probably the first one in a lot of cases. And so you want to you wanna be there and you want to say nice things and positive things and you're going to be living with these people for the rest of their lives and helping take care of the grandchildren and so forth. Yeah. And so the- you don't want to say something that you, you might regret. <laughs> And I, another trick, and uh, I did this at Sarah's wedding the other day, save the glass of red until after you've spoken. Yeah, so don't get drunk before you speak. No. <laughs> you, you, could, yeah, you, could, you earned yourself a glass of red at the end, not before. <laughs> and I think one, one last thing would be... Oh, sorry, can I just give one other point? Um, have two copies of your speech. I gave a, a, a backup copy of my speech to my brother Alistair, just in the advent that, you know, if I fell in the creek while the wedding was on it blew out of my pocket um, I had a backup 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 plan always yeah. have a backup, backup plan. and don't yeah don't necessarily just rely on your, your notes on your phone because if the battery dies or something like that yeah, yeah don't be afraid to take some um, printed notes and there was a lectrum there which I was lucky enough to and and the other trick bump the font size up <laughs> don't have to put your glasses on and do it like this. Just bump the font size up, yeah. man. Like, have a couple of pieces of paper instead of just yeah. one yeah. tiny yeah. card. That's probably read good. mine from the moon. <laughs> it's okay. No one can see it. So, and yeah. I think one thing, one good thing that we did was just running your your speech past at least one person before you get up there and give a speech. Obviously, you want it to be a surprise to the bride and to the groom. But if you have someone that is a trusted friend or family member yeah. that you can run that or speech just past, Ryan. he's good. Just give me a call. Then it's a good thing to do because I think that when we're talking to someone else and we're delivering a speech to someone else, we have this somewhat innate ability to understand when something in our speech doesn't flow. And it only comes out when we're talking to someone else. And recording yourself is great, but you sometimes miss some of the things that you get when you're standing in front of someone else and delivering it. And then obviously the feedback you get can be great as well. But don't always like feel a Toastmasters evaluation. Exactly. Yeah. But don't, don't always feel obligated to take the feedback either, because I gave Dad some feedback and some he took and some he didn't, and he was actually right on the part that feedback which he didn't take and so I'm glad he didn't take my feedback on some of them yeah, some of be, it. Be, and but and don't be afraid to change the speech like if you've got it written and you think it's perfect and then you run it past Ryan and there is an element of change then you know be man enough to say okay well let's, let's mold it and make it absolutely perfect do it that way yeah so and also have it written down properly when you go don't have Paragraph A goes up and you fit that bit in there and that's crossed out, and, you know, and that, don't like that word. And this is about like having time to prepare. This well. is Giving having time that to time. prepare. Don't do it the day before and turn up with a, you know, pocket with the back of an envelope somewhere that you've lost <laughs> in your pocket. And know where it is. <laughs> yeah. And um, go through five pockets. Yeah. And be, so- be a little bit of class. <laughs> So there we have some tips that I guess that didn't really flow the way we probably would have liked an interview or speech to flow in terms but of... But that's what it was. It's about building the speech because it doesn't all just come as one, okay, I'm writing a speech and then it just comes. It, it's you get an idea. Fitting those jigsaw pieces together as we discussed. And then it was like, yeah, you hidden, you had the missing piece for me. <laughs> so. Yeah, the <laughs> and then yeah. boom, and then the picture was complete. So yeah, and dad, dad delivered a great speech, and if we ever get access to it, I'll probably put it up on YouTube. Then no, oh, okay, cool, that'd be lovely. Yeah, we can um, show the world how show good the world. a speaker you are and what you've learned. Um, obviously, if with his permission, when he's not on camera, I'll ask him. Yeah, putting him on on the spot right now. No, that's fine by me. But yeah, so if you have any more questions, then just ask dad or yeah, shoot. call me. Shoot me an email, me. Uh, ryan at publicspeakingpower.com and I'll be happy to forward them on to my dad. And if you have any yeah. advice that you need or questions, or then we I'll, can address that. I'll do the speech for you. If you want. Yeah, we probably <laughs> wouldn't be so appropriate. Speaking on behalf of the father of the bride, I'd like to welcome everyone here. This evening. Doesn't quite have the same ring nah, to it, it does yeah. it? And that was the other thing that was um, sometimes... 
people are not very confident about speaking in a situation like that. So if you do know, for example, that your daughter's getting married next year, get yourself down to a Toastmasters meeting. Go as a guest, join, learn, get confident and learn from other people. And, you know, it's your big day too. So give do yourself a favour and build up some skills. Get ready for the bit and polish your shoes. <laughs> All right, well, if you want more videos, podcasts, or articles just like this one, then head over to publicspeakingpower.com when you can get access to our full archive over there.